Pro Group Management. Workers' comp that works for you. Welcome to Nevada News Megs on the broadcast. Today, State Senator Scott Hammond joins us, plus Mesquite City Councilwoman Annie Black. She's heading to the legislature. It's all coming up next on an all-new Nevada News Megs. Like a traditional handmade basket, retail is woven into the fabric of life in Nevada. From big box to mom and pop, retail supports our communities in countless ways. Jobs for the disabled, team uniforms for kids, help for the elderly, and so much more. Retail employs over 1 in 10 workers. Retail supports Nevada, and we support retail. R-A-N-N-V dot org. Pro Group Management offers workers' comp services to a growing number of industries. As businesses grow and change with the times, the need for a solid workers' comp program must be flexible and up-to-date. The evolving nature of regulations can make staying ahead of complex tasks challenging. But Pro Group Management simplifies the work so your industry can move forward and succeed. Pro Group Management. Workers' comp that works for you. Truck drivers are some of the hardest working people you'll meet, delivering over 70% of America's freight and 92% of Nevada's. When there's a natural disaster, they're delivering critical supplies to help those communities recover and rebuild. Every sector of the economy and our nation's military rely on truck drivers. So let's take a moment to say thank you. On the open road or city streets, our truck drivers are rolling to make our economy and our nation stronger. Trucking moves America forward. This is Nevada Newsmakers with host Sam Shad, a no holds barred political forum. Now, from the Nevada Newsmakers broadcast headquarters, here is Sam Shad. And back on Nevada Newsmakers, we're always pleased to welcome back to the program State Senator Scott Hammond, Republican of District 18. Pleasure to have you back on the program, sir. Hey, it's a pleasure to be on the program again. Thanks for having me today. Well, we wanted to get you back on after the second special session, and um, now you've had a little time to think about it. What were your thoughts coming out of that? Well, my, my thoughts were uh, the only thing that we really needed to accomplish in that session was the limited liability uh, worker safety uh, bill that came out. That was SB4. Uh, and then, of course, Dieter. I think that that, but both of those items should have been done in the first special session or the day after the first special session. We could have handled that. Could have taken us 48 hours to get that done. So really, what we essentially did was uh, pass legislation that could have waited five months until the regular session. It really did not need to happen. We didn't need to spend another $410,000 that came out of the general fund. Uh, we all thought that that was going to be coming out of CARES money because it was COVID related, but apparently there wasn't enough relevancy to, the, to COVID-19. And so the money ended up coming out of the uh, general fund, which again, uh, for many people who are paying attention to this, uh, you know, we don't have a, enough in our uh, budget to actually cover that kind of, we have enough, but it's, it, it, we're, we're, we're really thin there. Uh, we're supposed to be running on a 5% end fund balance, and then that dipped into that, uh, um, we're not even at the 5%, so it dipped into what little we have in the end fund balance. So I, I wasn't pleased with the fact that we did that. So then in your estimation, it was just pure, purely political? Oh yeah, and, uh, absolutely. Uh, and you only have to look at a few of those bills to know that it was really uh, political, especially SB4, uh, when they started tinkering around with who should have limited liability and who should not have limited liability. But when in fact it should have been you know, covered, everybody should be covered, it should be blank coverage uh, across the whole um, panorama. Uh, instead, we took out schools and we took out hospitals, hospitals of all things. Uh, so that, that was just, a, I think, a, a, just a microcosm of the whole session. Uh, that was purely political. And I believe that the whole session really was about it you know, uh, delivering uh, to the to the base of the, of the, the far left party. Uh, Mason Van Howling was on the program, who's the head of UMC, and he was saying he was not concerned about um, the hospitals being taken out of it. But but the reality of that is um, the UMC um, as a, a government run hospital um, would not be you know, or, or, or would be included in, in not having to deal with the liability issue. Correct. Correct. Yeah. As, as we read the, the bill, uh, UMC would have been uh, the only one covered until we pass an amendment uh, that uh, we evaluated uh, who is and who is not a nonprofit or what kind of nonprofit are we dealing with when it w when the first amendment came in the Senate uh, because of that amendment uh, uh, hospitals like we now up north 
would have been included in that. Uh, well, the assembly took care of that. They made sure that with their amendment, it was crystal clear that no other hospital other than UMC would be included um, in that, uh, in that uh, li limited liability. And it doesn't just you know, really impact hospitals. Uh, we're talking about anybody who is actually educating any of these uh, students someday as you know, medical students. Uh, it really is going to impact our, our, our students in the medical field right now. Uh, State Senator Joe Hardy, as you know, as a, as a physician, uh, made that point crystal clear. Uh, and then, of course, we received a letter from former uh, Congresswoman Shelley Berkeley uh, talking about the ramifications this bill would have on the uh, population of students in medical school uh, in the state of Nevada. And it's not, it's not going to be good. And, uh, and she, of course, uh, uh, runs Turo, and her husband is also a doctor as well. So she certainly has a lot of information on that. And she's a Democrat. So, <laughs> I mean, it's, that's a, a pretty good thing. So really, this was a huge victory for the trial lawyers. Uh, yeah, and I think, and I think to a, a limited sense to um, some of the, like the culinary union who really wanted to have safety measures placed uh, in, in, uh, in there. And of course, with the, the way that the uh, language was written, uh, it is going to take a, a, a certain number of people to actually execute uh, the safety protocols. And so the number of, of folks who are going to be working is going to increase as well. So I think to a certain degree, you, you're also the winner and that is also going to be uh, the culinary union trial lawyers uh, for sure. And, and it was fascinating to see the culinary union and the major resorts uh, coming together uh, in this way. That's not a normal practice between those two organizations. No, and, and again, it, it shows you how important the bill was because for those who, and, and again, Governor Sislak made sure that both of those, uh, both of those uh, items were in the bill, the, the worker safety and the limited liability, because you know, to, one, to a certain extent, some people didn't like the idea of uh, uh, limiting the liability across the board for businesses and uh, the resorts. Uh, and then some people didn't like the fact that we were putting into statute certain protocols on safety and cleanliness in, in uh, hospital or hotels, I'm sorry, hotels and, and businesses, uh, not a standard practice of ours. You know, usually we say this is what you need to do and then the regulations will cover the how to do it. Uh, so that, you know, that this was uh, definitely hard for you know, maybe both sides, I guess, of the issue to say, you know, we don't really like it, but if we're going to get this, I guess we're going to take uh, the other, the other uh, part of it as well. So there was a, a definite poison pill, if you will, um, in the bill for whatever legislator you might be talking to. Um, mining obviously had a laser-like focus on it. Um, how do you think this is going to play out? Um, I think that one of those three resolutions that passed is going to pass the 2021 uh, legislative session and been beat on the ballot in 2022. Um, as ill-conceived as they were. And I know I've heard several times uh, that some of the Democrats in the assembly kept uh, saying, well, we can always come back to the session in February and fix whatever's not right in the bill uh, or in the resolution. Uh, but we all know that once you change the resolution, then you have to start all over again. So really those three resolutions have to go through and maybe one, maybe two, maybe all three of them go on the ballot in 22. Not very good because if you look at the resolutions themselves, if everybody is complaining about the 5% net being in the Constitution itself and that we need to get it out of the Constitution, then they're not going to be happy with two of those measures because two of those measures basically keep mining in the Constitution, but then do the complete reverse. Instead of having the 5% net, you're going to a 7.75 gross on, on mining, which I've never seen anybody tax, um, you know, that, I've never seen anybody tax on gross like that. And that's going to be on the, on the ballot. I mean, it could really basically with, if you pass that, you're basically saying we don't want mining here because you're going to see essentially a lot of mines shut their doors and uh, lay people off. Uh, give me a quick answer on this because I want, need to go to a break. Um, but um, so bizarre to see a two thirds majority to decrease taxes. Uh, that blew me away. Yeah, my thoughts are uh, that, again, we're playing games. Uh, that's what it, it boils down to is we're playing games. Uh, instead of uh, lowering, you know, being able to raise and lower. I mean, right now, the only thing you need is a two thirds in order to get uh, a tax revenue and, and a tax increase. And so what they're saying is we want to set this as the, the baseline. And then the only way you can lower the baseline is with a two thirds vote. So it's the exact opposite of the will of the people as it was passed many years ago. All right, let's take a break more with State Senator Scott Hammond after this. I can't do it. Stupid, like my mom. We can't do anything at Mommy's because you won't pay child support. Dad said you cheated, and he's not even sure he's my dad. Mommy said you left both of us, so she isn't going to let me see you. 
I look just like my father. I'm divorce attorney Marilyn York, and I may represent men, but hate has no gender, only mm -hmm. casualties. Please, stop sacrificing your children in your war against your ex. Because of UMC, I'm putting my free time to good use. Because of UMC, she keeps me on my toes. Because of UMC and this guy, I'm here. UMC, the highest level of care in Nevada. The signs and symptoms of cataracts can start out small with subtle changes in your vision. So don't wait. Be proactive and take your vision into your own hands. If you're experiencing the onset of cataracts or just have questions, contact your eye care professional or call Eye Care Associates of Nevada today. Dr. Hiss has years of experience specializing in the surgical correction of eye disorders and has completed over 84,000 vision correcting procedures. At Eye Care Associates of Nevada, we'll change the way you look at the world. Dad? Why are you learning? This place is great. Huh? You gotta try this. Wow! This stuff is great! People are gonna love it! Yes. Yes, they will. This is Nevada Newsmakers. And back on Nevada Newsmakers, we continue our conversation with State Senator Scott Hammond, Republican of District 18. With what's going on with Dieter, I mean, is, is, would this have happened to any governor just because of the volume of, of people needing to get unemployment benefits? Or is this something you're seeing as a problem with this governor? I think absolutely this would have happened to anybody at the very beginning, right? Because our system is somewhat antiquated. We're not, we weren't um, cloud-based, at least not the regular dealer. Of course, uh, when we did the PUA, the PUA system, uh, we went to a vendor that was more cloud-based. But you, seen, you, you saw some other states years ago, and in some cases as, as few as two years ago, changed to a, a cloud system. And in some cases, they were handling 30, 35,000 calls a day easily uh, and then confirming uh, some of their eligibilities a lot quicker. So this could have happened to anybody at the beginning. This is unprecedented. You didn't see, you know, you just didn't see the volume uh, happen uh, as it did in March like anything else. Uh, of course, I, I still do believe that the governor should have been aware that this was going to happen. Um, I don't want to play Monday morning quarterback, um, but really... Uh, it, had it been me, I would have sat myself down at Dieter for hours every day and try to figure out what was going on, listen to what was going on, uh, be able to know what's going on, trust the people you have there, absolutely. But you need to assess what's going on, make sure people know that you are there to help out. Um, I, would have, I would have taken calls, made sure that I you know, put the call, you know, gave the calls to somebody who can get that stuff done, but I would have sat there and taken calls from people because you, you have to let people know you care about this particular issue especially when it, the volume was so great. Um, now that we're six months into it, uh, I am afraid that uh, perhaps a lot of things were mishandled and now we are in the, in the place we are. I, I feel horrible for, um, you know, I know that uh, Stephanie Tyler, she stepped down. Uh, perhaps it wasn't in her wheelhouse. Uh, I think Heather Korbulik, um, she's got a lot of experience doing this, you know, and, and being a very good a bureaucrat in, in this kind of area. But, uh, you know, the death threats, the the, the sheer volume, um, the, the fact that I don't know if she got how much support she got. I know she moved aside. Um, this was a good move by the governor, uh, putting somebody like Barbara Buckley in charge of the whole thing uh, and getting some idea of what's going on in, the, in, in Dieter. Uh, I, I would hope that she would get some good support later on as well from uh, the new uh, interim director. But uh, I, I really think that uh, they could have used the $10 million that we had suggested they take in order to get on top of the fraud. Because let's be honest, the fraud is unprecedented. You know, when, you, when you pay out, and this is what they said in testimony in the hearing, we've paid out about $6.2 billion. And we believe, and as we listen to the, you know, the folks answering the questions, we believe that 50% of that was fraud. That's $3 billion we paid out fraudulently, uh, to fraudulent claims, uh, money we can't get back. So really, uh, that's hard. 
And that's where we have to leave it. Scott Hammond, always a pleasure to have you on the program, sir. Thank you for doing this, always. We appreciate it. And we'll be right back. Dimitri Prine here for Design Outdoor. Come visit Design Outdoor's store and backyard to see our wide selection of fire pits, barbecues, and pizza ovens, natural stone water features, and fountains, and frost-proof pottery. Our store and backyard are located at 11600 South Virginia, just north of DeMonte Ranch Parkway. Visit designoutdoor.com or call us at 851-9499. I can't do it. Stupid, like my mom. We can't do anything at Mommy's because you won't pay child support. Dad said you cheated, and he's not even sure he's my dad. Mommy said you left both of us, so she isn't going to let me see you. I look just like my father. I'm divorce attorney Marilyn York, and I may represent men, but hate has no gender, only casualties. Please, stop sacrificing your children in your war against your ex. Hi, I'm Dave Newman. Remember me? I used to be the house detective, and now I'm a realtor, full-time at Remax Realty Affiliates. And a lot of people ask me, how's the market? You know what? It's fantastic. If you're even kicking around the idea of buying or selling, give me a call. Let's talk about it. Call me at Remax Realty Affiliates and just ask for the guy who used to be the house detective, Dave Newman. Everyone is talking about opioids, but they're not the only drugs that can be harmful if taken in large quantities or not as prescribed. You also need to be aware of side effects from anxiety drugs, muscle relaxants, sleep aids, and stimulants. Mixing prescription drugs with other drugs or alcohol can be dangerous. If you take Ambien with a glass of wine, it may be enough to stop you from breathing. Prescribed drugs can be just as dangerous as illegal drugs. Take medications only as directed. This is Nevada Newsmakers. And back on Nevada Newsmakers, we're pleased to welcome for the first time to the program Republican Annie Black. She is a Mesquite City Councilwoman, and she's also an Assemblywoman elect. Welcome to the program for the first time. We're pleased to have you. Uh, you just spent time in Carson City during the uh, second special session. Your thoughts? Uh, pretty disappointing. Um, I will say I was disappointed to see that they didn't cut anything out of the spending part of the budget. We just increased our revenue, which is an interesting way to uh, look at raising taxes and things like that. But um, also the second session, um, I was interested to see what they were doing with the law enforcement um, bills and uh, yeah, so it was an interesting one. And also the mail-in ballots and the ballot harvesting, that's worrisome as well. Um, mining obviously came uh, under a laser focus. What were your thoughts on the idea of just one industry um, getting that kind of attention? Um, I, it, it, it's disappointing, obviously. I mean, it's, it's, they're always looking to get more money to spend, and I was hoping that they were going to cut money from the budget spending wise. So it's frustrating to see that we can never cut. We always have to add and increase, which I guess is the nature of government, but it doesn't, it doesn't matter to me what industry you're talking about. We shouldn't be in the middle of a pandemic when most private businesses are cutting employees and, and cutting back on spending. Even our households are doing that, but the government is refusing to do that. Okay, so let me ask you, and I'm gonna play devil's advocate here and ask you this, but I mean, you know, I don't think anybody wants to see anybody unemployed, do they? What's, yeah, no, I mean, we obviously don't want to see anyone unemployed, but the reality is that's what's happening in all of our lives right now. It, it's, it's just a fact of life. If you're making less money, you have to spend less money. So that's not, um, it's not an easy choice to make, but the governor showed us how to make it when he shut everything down for the for corona. You got to put things into categories. It's either essential or it's non-essential. And if it's non-essential, it's got to go. It's tough, but it, that's what we have to do. Um, how do you feel that that's played out with the governor uh, between essential and non-essential businesses? Um, do you think that uh, he's acted appropriately or do you have concerns? I think he's been extremely inconsistent. Um, you know, I mean, 
I can go to the grocery store. For an example, I can go to the grocery store and walk down the liquor aisle, but during the shutdown, I couldn't go to Lee's Liquor and walk down the liquor aisle. I could, you know, go to a golf course, but I couldn't go to a, a park with my kids. Um, I, I had a real problem with the inconsistencies and I'm still struggling to wrap my head around the situation with churches and, and all that stuff. And, and is it with casinos? We saw with Ahern when they recently had the, uh, evangelicals for Trump event, they came in and were trying to be shut down because they were saying that 50 people was the max when we understand it to be that 50% occupancy is what you're permitted to have. So it really is, I think, depends on, on who they're trying to implement these rules on, which is extremely unfair, but we're used to that at this point, so. Um, actually, you bring up a really good point. Uh, Don Ahern owns the Ahern Hotel, uh, which is now the former Lucky Dragon has been turned into a convention center. And um, uh, the mayor of Las Vegas, Carolyn Goodman, had attended larger events than 50 people, uh, and they were basing it on the 50% occupancy level uh, rather than 50 people or less. And yet the licensing department came in after the uh, pro-Trump event and then the Mrs. Senior Nevada event. Um, is this a whole political action on behalf of the licensing department of the uh, Las Vegas City Council rather than the wishes of the city council in general? I don't know if that's coming from the city council as much as it's coming from the governor, but it definitely does seem to be political. I mean, you go back to the uh, Republican Party state convention that was completely shut down, even though they were um, they were going to uh, comply to the to the restrictions. So it does seem like it's based on party lines and um, there seems to be a vindictive nature about it. That's really disappointing. Um, we were talking earlier and you were uh, describing uh, the conservative movement at this point uh, in the state of Nevada has destroyed the brand. Uh, can you elaborate on that a little? Sure, yeah. So, I mean, I think from the point that we had control of the most of our state government uh, when Sandoval was governor, um, when we had the tax increase, the commerce tax, and then we passed three consecutive sessions of huge billion dollar budget increases. It seems like, understandably so, Republican leadership and stronghold in the state has completely deteriorated. And uh, at this point, it's, I mean, we're almost to the point where we're absolutely powerless over anything, which is really scary because if we don't turn some seats over in this upcoming election, we've got to look forward to redistricting, which, um, and if we don't get some, if we don't gain some traction in the assembly and hold some, hold our ground in the Senate, we could be in real trouble. And, and what kind of chances do you think um, that the Republicans have? I mean, obviously both sides are energized. You know, there, there are instances you can look at and go, okay, one side or the other stayed home and the other side uh, got victories. Uh, but in this case, it would appear that both sides are energized. So how do you think that's gonna play out? I don't know. I think it's a game for, for everyone in the middle, right? Um, the Democrats are obviously energized and so are the Republicans, but we've got those people in the middle that we were always vying for, which is a ever growing group. And uh, I think it's just going to depend who has better messaging, who's out there working harder. Um, I definitely think as far as the, you know, the president and our state goes, we have I think the best possible candidates that we could have in the fight. So that's promising, but We'll have to wait and see until November. Uh, 2021, the legislative session, um, you're going to Carson City. You, uh, you won basically in the primary. Um, are you going to Carson City as somebody who's going to look to work across the aisle and accomplish things there, or are you looking to be a flamethrower? I'm looking to be a flamethrower. Okay, and in what way? Uh, I want to... Well, I, I think that we know being, unless something changes, we're in the super minority. Uh, and obviously I've been very vocal leading up to the session and we'll continue to be very vocal. So I'm imagining when I get up there and even now, I'm not, <laughs> I'm not probably the most popular Republican up there. So I'm not under any illusions that I'm gonna do all this and then go up there and pass some substance, substantive conservative legislation. And if it's not, conservative legislation that I actually believe in, I'm not going to 
I'm not gonna try to push it through just to pass something so that I can say, oh, look, I went to Carson City and, and I was successful because I passed some watered down bill that, that Democrats let me pass. Um, so if I, being a flamethrower to me looks like we go up there, we, we make comments, we ask questions, we talk to the press, uh, we communicate heavily with the, the voters in our district and also throughout the state and just try to make a difference that way. Um, are there any people in either leadership or in the ranks of the Republican caucus um, that you align yourself with? Uh, John Ellison is probably the guy that I would align myself most with. I think Jim Wheeler's good as well. Um, I, yeah, I think they're all, I mean, we have some good folks up there. All right, um, uh, we've got about uh, less than a minute here and I wanted to ask you, in real life you're a realtor and uh, the market uh, for realty in Nevada has been surprisingly strong. Is, are you seeing the same effect in Mesquite as you are statewide? Yeah, so I sell from Mount Charleston to Mesquite and uh, everywhere in between. I've got houses in Pahrump and Henderson and Las Vegas and Mesquite for sale right now and I'm working with buyers. The market's crazy. I don't, I, I'm worried that when the government uh, subsidies wear out and we people will have to get off unemployment. Eventually, someday, we're all gonna have to get back to to work. Uh, what's gonna happen at that point? And obviously, we have stays on the evictions and stuff like that, so I feel like we're just prolonging the inevitable and I'm really worried about what's gonna happen. So, that's scary. I would love to talk about Annie Pack, too, if you don't mind. Um, and that would have to be on our next visit because we're out of time on this one, uh, but you are welcome back and uh, we will definitely see you in Carson City as well. Thanks for being here. Thanks. And we'll be right back. A bird's eye captures its surroundings at different heights. At Brian Culp of Photography, we can make your imagination soar over buildings, parks, cityscapes, and beyond. Brian's images tell the story and get the job done. If you need a new perspective to tell your story, contact Brian today. Brian Culp of Photography. Experience the bird's eye view at brianculpaphotography.com. Hi, my name's Marilyn Miner, and I'm sure you'd agree that Nevada's a very special place to live. I was born here, and my husband and I have raised our family here. I feel it's a privilege to live and work in the Truckee Meadows. I especially enjoy helping my clients reach their real estate goals. Sometimes the smallest details provide the greatest satisfaction. I'd be complimented to talk to you about your next move. Call Marilyn Miner at Dixon Realty, 742-1280, or log on to MarilynMiner.com. Safety. We all think about it. You think about it when he buckles in, when you check your mirrors and put away your phone. RTC thinks about safety, too. In fact, we create it. Center turn lanes mean fewer blind spots. Bike lanes keep cyclists and you safe. Roundabouts reduce injury collisions. And all these crosswalks are designed to keep families like yours safe. Safety is your priority, and it's ours too. Every day, in everything we do. Pro Group Management specializes in providing industries with the necessary components to satisfy and exceed workers' comp requirements. Every business has unique needs and specific regulations. Pro Group Management stays ahead of the curve, providing up-to-date services to keep your industry in top form. Discover how we simplify your tasks, improve efficiency, and reduce expense to keep you moving in a positive direction. Pro Group Management, workers' comp that works for you. You can now watch Nevada Newsmakers on YouTube. Just go to YouTube and search for Nevada Newsmakers and become a subscriber. We'll see you on the next broadcast. Thanks for watching and listening.